good morning students today's class we will see about the preterm rupture of membranes or premature rupture of membrane spontaneous rupture of membranes any time beyond 28 week of pregnancy but before the onset of labor is known as preterm rupture of membrane causes include exercises unknown increased friability of the membrane decreased tensile strength of membrane polyhydramnio cervical incompetency multiple pregnancy infection that is chorea amniotis and urinary, urinary tract infection diagnosis is by patient history and physical examination sterile speculum examination for identification of pooling of fluid in the vagina nitrous in test positive test will change the ph paper strip from yellow to green yellow green to blue in the presence of amniotic fluid from the vaginal canal for this positive test will reveal fawning on the slide viewed under microscope a swab of posterior vaginal fornix is taken to obtain amniotic fluid watery discharge per vagina differential diagnosis are hydroria gravidarum and incontinence of urine investigation include full blood count urine for routine analysis and culture high vaginal swab for culture usg for fetal biophysical profile management preliminary thing rule once diagnosed admitted to the hospital and usually remains till delivery a septic examination with sterile speculum vaginal digital examination patient put on bed rest and sterile bubble pad management depend upon gestation age of the fetus whether the patient is in labor or not evidence of sepsis and prospect of fetal survival term prom we can continue means we the labor can be induced preterm pro prophylactic antibiotics and use of corticosteroids for the lung maturity of the fetus been minim- needed management is more than 34 weeks when pro is confirmed patient admitted to the hospital and usually remains until their delivery gestational fetal present gestational age fetal presentation and well being should be determined at any gestational age the patient with evident of intrauterine infection placental abruption evidence of category 3 fetal heart rate pattern is best cared by the ep- expeditious delivery if immediate delivery is not indicated cultures of cervix should be obtained for gubmans chlamydia gonorrhea and group b streptococcus streptococcus is appropriate expectant management offer an adequate time for latent phase of labor to progress may be as long as 12 hours at the discretion of the primary practitioner and external fetal monitoring a vaginal examination are kept to minimum to prevent infection once the decision to deliver is made the gbs prophylaxis that is group b streptococcal step hemolytic streptococcus prophylaxis should be initiated based on the prior culture results and risk factors active management include oxytocin induction may be initiated at the time of presentation to reduce risk of chorea amniotis postpartum febrile morbidity and neonatal antibiotic treatment complications include pre- pre- means preterm labor prematurity associated with complications maternal infections chorea amniotis fetal or neonatal infection evaluate maternal bp heart rate and bp means respiratory rate and temperature every 2 to 4 hour if temperature or pulse is elevated continue to monitor for 1 to 2 hour monitor the type and amount of amniotic fluid that is leaking and observe for purulent for smelling discharge evaluate fetal status every 4 hours as indicator determine any uterine tenderness on abdominal palpation nursing assessment include evaluate the maternal bp respiration pulse and temperature periodically if temperature or pulse is elevated continue monitoring more frequently monitor the amount and type of amniotic fluid that is leaking observe for purulent for smelling discharge and report immediately assess the patient periodically for diffuse abdominal pain or pain in the palpation as a signs of increased infection evaluate periodic cbc with differential result any shift to the left that is increased immature forms of neurotrophic sickness in infection communicate any findings that are the signs of infection to the primary practitioner and perinatal team evaluate the fetal status periodically depending on the stages of labor tachycardia and maybe sign of maternal infection preterm premature rupture of membrane the rupture of membrane before 37 completed weeks of gestation with or without onset of spontaneous labor we call it as the preterm premature rupture of membrane causes include the risk factors are infections previous history of prom ptl hydramnios incompetent cervix increase in diuretic volume abruptia placenta and smoking fetal anomalies and coitus management when the patient is admitted for facility and usually remains the gestational age fetal presentation and fetal well being should be determined at any gestation age patient with evident intrauterine infection placental abruption or evidence of any infection if immediate delivery is not included 
the cultures of serving should be obtained expectant management once the lab once once in labor fetal compromise and infection are ruled out expectant management is maintained with external fetal monitoring to assess fetal and uterine data accompanied by periodic antepartum testing as indicated that means vaginal examination gbs pro prophylaxis that is good be hemolytic staphylococcus prophylaxis is recommended corticosteroids antibiotics expectant management that is between 24 to 31 weeks once labor fetal compromise and infections are ruled out by gene the same prophylaxis can be done so management for preterm premature rupture of membrane tocolytis corticosteroids to increase the decrease the severity of rds in the premature neonate and prophylactic antibiotics are used initial management confirmed by rom determine if bacterial infections are present document the gestation and determine the fetal lung maturity Active management, tocolytic therapy, antibiotic therapy, and corticosteroid administration, amniotic infusion. Conservative management includes bed rest, vital signs as the institutional policy, monitor fetal well-being daily or more as indicated by the institutional policy. Complications for maternal complications include increased risk for intrauterine infections, postpartum endometriosis, placental abruption. Fetal complications are infection, neonatal complications include RDS, infection, and death of the baby. Nursing assessment evaluate the maternal vital signs periodically to assess the infection. Include fetal assessment, monitor the fetal infections like tachycardia, minimal. absent fhr variability variable deceleration monitor for maternal chorea amniotis minimize the infection with decrease or no vaginal examination strict bed rest with or without bathroom means bathroom privileges are ordered evaluate daily cpc communicate any abnormal finding with the pediatrician treating physicians offer supportive care organize a neonatal consult for anticipatory guidance as indicated thank you